are licensed best choice realty brokers, who's also one of my photographers. Um, he's a senior photographer and he's been doing a lot of photography shoots for um, our uh, team up north. We have a group of agents that work up in Kirkland and Bellevue. And so I have James Wan, uh, I hope I said that right, James, on, yes, the, uh, yes. on the call. Um, he's going to go over some real scenarios with you, maybe some sample photos. But there are a few things I want to cover tonight. And you know we don't have a lot of time to cover a lot of material. Um, but I want to go over really quickly how to attach on the MLS your virtual tours or your video tours. Um, that's really, really big with some of the price points that you guys are working on. And then um, I'll turn it over to James to kind of show and we can kind of have a conversation, just the, the two of us. And hopefully you guys will pick up some good tips and tricks. Uh, I've muted your lines except for James and for me, but if you have some chats or if you want to chat in the message box, um, if you want to see something or we, we're missing something, you have a question, go ahead and do a chat on the right there on your screen. Um, we will record it, so if you have other questions after the call, be sure and uh, do a comment on YouTube or send me a private message and I'll be happy to help you and assist you and point you the right direction. So with that, let's start right off the bat. If Shannon, if you could put on the MLS on the screen, that would be great. I can show you kind of a dilemma that I have um, and that many of you have uh, had, and I know James is prepared to talk about this, but you have a listing coming up and you're thinking, who do I want to hire as a photographer? What kind of photography shoot do I want to include? Um, and so I'm going to show you on the screen one of my listings I just put up today. It's on Fifth Street, the very bottom, Shannon. Very, very bottom. There you go. And I just put this one up on the screen as a, as a visual representation of what can be done. Um, one thing that you want to be able to do is, you know, in, in an $8.99 price point in Edgewood or Pierce County, you definitely want to spend some money. You don't want to do cell phone um, camera photos for something like this. When I first took this listing a few months ago, um, I did have another photographer go in and I selected this photographer because she had Matterport or experience in doing 3D walking tours. And so I hired her to go ahead and do the Matterport. However, James, you can probably speak to this, the still photography was not up to the standards that this particular seller wanted to have. And so I ended up having to spend even more money for a professional photographer who could actually take some still photos to enhance my listing along with the 3D Matterport tour. So you can see I scroll through a few of them, Shannon, so you can get a feel for it. This is from the um, other photographer. The angles are important. The lighting is important to capture what the seller wanted to capture. The Matterport camera, when that photographer was out there doing the Matterport, she was very uh, proficient at the Matterport. She was not good at the still. She was taking pictures more of the furniture rather than the space. So I definitely needed to make sure I had somebody who could do the professional photography on this particular listing. So you can kind of get a feel for the quality or the type of house that we're dealing with here. Go ahead and exit out of that, Shannon, really quickly. And then go ahead and go into the input and let's let's show everybody where you would go to add the Matterport. So you would get a link in your email and you would want to go, go grab it. Nicole, Nicole Baxter does a great job on Matterport, um, but it's like I said, her still photography needs some work. She's not as senior as say um, James would be at doing some nice stills. Um, so go to virtual tour link, but the Matterport is, is huge, you guys. A lot of people want that. They are seeing it on other websites, technology websites that are really touting that they're providing 3D Matterport or walking tours for out of town guests. And so I do want to link it. And it was just as simple as doing that. Now all I can do is click on the link and you would see on the right next to the right side of the pictures, there's a little kind of roll like a photography wheel right above the whistle. If you could hover over that Shannon so they could see where where it goes. Kind of right above the whistle, if you could hover over that, there's a little reel and that's where the Matterport or the virtual tour is stored. And so people will connect that as well as websites will pull from that. 
and it does have to be, um, it does not, can't, cannot be branded. So you can't do like a YouTube and do your own video tour. It has to be unbranded, meaning it cannot have your information on it. It has to be um, unbranded for the MLS, okay? So that's what I wanted to show you, how important in Matterport, you get a really sense of the depth and you can kind of walk through with the Matterport. Um, but I want to turn it over to, to um, James real quick, just to kind of understand, maybe James, you could maybe help me understand how you look at photography when you're going out on a listing or when you're educating people like me with various price points and categories, when you would offer, you know, Matterport, when you would offer 3D or when you would do stills. Can you kind of take the controls at this point and go through that? Sure, uh, let me share my desktop. Okay, how can I share the whole desktop here? Let's see, there should be a share button. Can you? You're sharing, here you go, I can see your okay. screen. Okay, let me see here. Can you see my PPT? I can, yeah. Okay. You're good to go. Okay, let me see here. Um, Okay, let me see that. Basically, I talked to hundreds of uh, agents and the uh, sellers, got a lot of experiences. Basically, I think today, basically, we just focus on photos. Um, I found, because I already know photos are so critical, mm -hmm. but you still see a lot of bad photos out there. <laughs> I know. Yeah, there are a lot of reasons. Um, so I, I think today we just focus on more like a technical part, um, okay. uh, how to tell a good photo, a poor photo. Okay. And what's the price range? Um, how much do you pay for your, this listing for the steel images? Right, on this one? Yeah. Um, the Matterport is around a few hundred dollars, two, I think 250, something like that for Matterport. Yeah. Well, and then the still good. photography is about, it depends on the type, you know, of how many photos we want. Yes. So um, what to pay you for, for this one? Uh, I can't remember on this one. Okay. The first That's photography okay. is very, very cheap on the first. Yeah, but no. you get what you pay for. You know, if, yes, you, pay, yes. if you pay cheap, it, you get cheap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. um, so basically, I think the photographer is very important. Let's go through some basics uh, okay. first. Um, let me go through two scenarios here, two actual listings here. And then we do a okay. comparison. Um, let me look here. So this is a, a listing in Kirkland, uh, sold in 2014. This is kind of old. The reason I bring this up because I shoot it in 2018. Um, there was a reshoot, there were a lot of issues. Um, it's, it's very good to do a comparison here. So it's listed by Remax, huh, right? Remax is a good company. Look at their photos. Um, what's wrong with this photo? the two basic problems with this photo. Number one, always vertical should stay vertical. It look like this house is falling down. It's not, right? So vertical has to be vertical. That's a basic criteria for pro pro professional photos. Okay. Number two, the photo should not have a too dark, too bright. So here it's just too dark. Right, you cannot see anything here. So there are two issues that don't look like professional. So um, look at this one. This one not too bad, the house itself, but here is a little bit too dark, but not too okay. bad overall. Um, this photo definitely, vertical is not vertical. It's a lot of distortion, right? right? Uh, definitely, why we need this photo anyway? So the door is, is great, but it's not so great, right? So I think, um, we don't need this photo, in my opinion, uh, with it. This photo, the composition that is good overall, but the problem with this photo is overexposed. Yeah. You cannot see the sky. So that does not meet the second standard. The lighting has to be too, not too bright or too dark. There is no too dark here, right? But it's mm -hmm. definitely too bright. Um, this photo is okay, but uh, why we need this photo? Um, it's kind of question because it's a big house, right? It's kind of wasting. Uh, look at this one. This one is very similar to 
the yeah, previous the photo. Yeah. A little bit larger, uh, like this photo better, but it's still overexposed here. Okay. Right. So it's, a, it's a luxury home, but it's, it's the photo is really um, doesn't show that. <clears throat> Look at this one. Look at this. <laughs> it's really kind of, a, I think with a cell phone, even can show this better. Yes, I know. <laughs> yes. So definitely vertical, I have to say vertical, no distortion. The, another problem with this photo is the yellow, yellow color, because the paint is not yellow. So the, that means the color is not correct. Okay. And there were a lot of yellow overcast. Yellow make the house older, not newer, right? Okay. So we typically want to get rid of the, the, the yellow color. What right? causes the yellow color? It's because of the ambient light, the okay. light. Yeah, light the, um, the floor, because the floor is, is dark color. Mm -hmm. the, the reflection will make a lot of weird color as well. Do you do you recommend opening all of the windows so you get the natural light when you, before you shoot, James? Yes, we do yeah. because because also can show um, is is that because of light is because you feel like the openings, right? Mm, okay. Otherwise, you feel like uh, yeah. It feels bigger. Yeah, yes. feel bigger. Um, okay. So I think just go through this. Uh, basically, it doesn't look like professional. <laughs> uh, definitely, uh, right? Let me stop here. Show me, show me some good ones. Um, this is not the best. I shoot in 2018, two years ago. Uh, we have only have less than one year experiences. Okay. So look at the same photo. This is almost identical, but, right. right? So this, this is much more clear here, right? It's better. Um, this one, very similar to the previous one. Here is a vertical. Yes, very it's nice. It's vertical. And here is this brighter, a little too dark, right? So this will look like a more professional, even though not the best, but at least um, it is about average. Look at this. I shoot it from the inside. Mm -hmm. The door is not so huge, but this distortion. But the distortion help looks better. <laughs> look at the door much bigger. So. Yeah. And also can show the living room, the high ceiling. So it's this very good composition in my opinion. Okay. So the no I mean, I think the other one they were trying to show the door of like it's a it's a luxury door or it's an estate. Yeah, this one is also but this one can show better. This right? is much better. Yeah. I can I give you more information, right? Look like a luxury home. So the seller really like it. Say, God, you make it so great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So um there are no two this is not overexposed. There are no darkness. Uh, the only problem with this one because it's not very sharp mm -hmm. here because my post processing skill was not so great at that time. <laughs> so oh, you're such a perfectionist. You're so funny. yeah. So I think <laughs> yes, this is like less than one year experience at that time. So this okay. one look at here, it's a guy, right? Wow. So it's it's not overexposed. So um, the composition is good the only problem the sharpness you can see is not very sharp right mm -hmm. so this is because of post processing scale so i showed another composition the previous photo does not have so this composition is good the only problem is also the sharpness basically so okay. it's an okay photo um composition is good but sharpness is not very good, in my opinion. It's probably, it's not sharp because it's been downsized too, right, James, on the MLS? Oh, uh, it's not. It's because of my post-processing skill. I know. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. You have uh, even better. Well, I mean, then photography has come up, you know, even the last two years. Yes, right? I, I've become better, better right now. Uh, let's look at another um, example. Um, And then that price range is about a million then, about 9.45. So that probably like one, one, one or something now. Yeah, let this me see. also is a nice. Uh, look at this one. Uh, this, uh, this is a photo in Bellevue. Uh, this external uh, shoot. Let's look at this photo. One interior photo. This is before post-processing. Okay. So definitely this is too dark, right? Uh, this is direct from camera. This is uh, too bright. But uh, after some uh, basic post-processing, 
you can oh, look wow. at it as much better, right? The problem with this one is still like, it's not sharp enough. The probably too much yellow here. So I can see this is okay, um, but it's not very good. Second one, this one, this one is better because we remove the yellow a little bit sharper, mm -hmm. right? So the window, look at the window. The window is it's more clear, right? So did you look go with number three then, James, when you when you post it? Oh, number this four. One. Okay. Wow. This one I call the premium quality, right? Look at the window is so sharp, so clear. Mm -hmm. So right, the interior also very sharp. So that's very similar to your recent listing, right? It's kind of sharp. Yes. Yes, good quality. You can see the same photo with a different processing, you can get different quality. Just to pay a little, little more money, you can get good quality. So how do you determine, what questions do you ask it, to determine, you know, I'm a real estate agent, I don't have any, I'm not a photographer, James. What kind of questions should I be asking my photographer to make sure that they're meeting the standards that I want? Just ask them, give you the showcases. Show right. you some things. I show you okay. the project they have done with a similar listing. So it should be a recent, right? Mm -hmm. So naturally, are you sure you can shoot the same quality, right? Get the same quality or not, right? So um, basically, I classify photo quality into three levels. One is called the basic, meets okay. the minimum bar. So that means minimum standard. You have to have a wide angle. Okay. If you don't have angle, definitely not, right? Mm -hmm. um, the other three basic criteria is vertical, had to stay vertical. You cannot like twist it. Okay. No too dark, no too bright. That's the second criteria. The third one is the color had to be correct. It's okay. blue look like a blue, white look like white, right? So. Yeah. Um, now, and, and while you're kind of going over this, James, we at Best Choice Realty pride ourselves in having good photography. But when I looked to see our listings, I would say only 50%. If, if we have 50%, only half of the listings are good that we even yes, meet the minimum standard. Yes, it's not yes, very good. We need to work on this this year. Definitely, definitely, we need more education. Also, it's not it's not like too expensive. The question is like education and also. Um, Cool. Beyond the yeah. quality, after you met the three criteria, the, the quality really determined by the sharpness and the composition, right? Okay. Which angle you shoot, where you shoot. So um, if you look at here, how can I minimize this? The premium, yeah, we can, look, we can look at the difference. the premium and typical. Yeah, we can see t basic, typical, and premium. I, I can definitely see the premium would be the sharpness or the clarity, you know, the windows. Yes coming through, I can tell the difference. And yes, then... basically, if you compare, window is the most, criteria, most obvious criteria. Look at the window, if it's super clear, can see the outside very clear or not. If not, it's not high quality. Okay. This, yes. So you look at the second one, even the, this one, so uh -huh. you, 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 the, the tree is not green, right? It's not clear. Yeah. Yes. So, um, I think most of photos look like this, basically. Okay, they're typical. And what would you say, like pricings? I, I had an agent yes. that came to my office, James, and she's like, um, I speak Chinese and the chi this Chinese photographer was going to charge me over a thousand dollars for a photo shoot. Yeah, yes, okay. Crazy. That's probably reasonable for that quality, but most people do not need that quality. Okay. Uh, let me go through here. The basic, typically around hundred dollars, probably plus minus $20 range. Okay. Yeah, they look yellow, probably not, right? Um, typical, probably get rid of the yellow, but window is still not very clear. So okay. this probably below, definitely had to be below $200. If and we're just talking, that, that's probably so okay. just so I'm clear, James, this is still photography, right? This is still, yeah. 25 photos, I just need some really nice still photography that's not on my camera, not on my iPhone. So, yes, yes. okay, so you got your basic at about 100, I agree with that, and then typical 150 to 200, and what's the yes. um, 200? This range, yeah. for premium, 
most of premium probably between 200 and $300. I think you can get something close to this quality. Really depend on okay. which photographer you are using. Um, but the said, premium can go up to 500 1000 even $2,000. It really depends on some seller um, and the listing agent are really picky. So they have the budget. Mm -hmm. They want to really every detail has to be perfect, right? You have to spend so much right. money. But with that's basically it. Um, you can see this, the difference between basic and premium is just $100. Yeah. You can't afford it, right? Yeah. You can't afford it. Exactly. So the question is, how can you find such photographers? That's a different question, right? Um, okay. So in the next slides, I can explain roughly what's the key, key factors affecting the quality in the cars. You can get a rough idea. Three, okay. basically to shoot, you commute, right? We're not going to talk about commute. We're talking about shooting. A low price photographer probably just spent 15 or 30 minutes maximum at, right. shooting, at your site, including turn, up, turn off the lights, turn on the lights. So po post processing spent probably 10, 20, maximum one hour on the post processing. That's it. So a good photographer typically can spend at least one hour just shooting at your site or probably one and a half an hour. For mm -hmm. high, really high end, probably spend half a day, even a day there. Right. Yes. Post processing, a good photographer um, processor probably take two or three hours. This is typical. Okay. For very expensive ones, probably spend five or six hours in a day. So um, that's basically. Um, so if, for I, if I was going to hire you, James, right, I would want to understand, you know, where the project was. Like you may not want to drive all, all the way down to Edgewood. Yes, I don't know yes, where your so, range is, right? Yes, but so that, so, that would be a consideration. Yes, so basically, TV. typically, most within 20 miles typically are free for most of photographers. Beyond that, some okay. photographers charge $1, two, basically $2, I think makes sense per, per mile. Okay. And some companies charge four, $4. It really depends on um, the pricing range. Okay. Um, and we've got photographers, just so you know, of all the areas. Like I know we've got people over in the Kitsap and Squim. Well, even Squim. Some people over, yeah, and Squim are on the call tonight um, as well, James. So we have people all over Puget Sound that is listening yes. in on this call. So I appreciate you taking the time to break that down. So then what are the techniques? You know, how do you- yeah, I roughly explain, you can, hey, I learned something new, right? <laughs> okay, so photographer always talk about HDR, look at like an HDR, they have so sharp images. No, actually everybody using HDR a similar technology right now. So do not, when they say mention HDR, do not think it's a big deal, okay? Okay. <laughs> um, HDR can produce bad images as well. Um, the first one is the most expensive one, using flashing, umbrella, multiple flash, so it can give you the sharpest, the best images, but the it's very expensive because for every shot, they have to set up the umbrella and and the flash. Right. So rarely used right now because with the new technology, we do not need it unless uh, shoot for commercial. So most of people right now, photographer using iPod, just use a, use a camera without a flash. Uh, the tripod can stabilize the camera, can make the image better. Um, but the problem is for every shot, they have to set up the Set up the tripod, tripod. <laughs> take time to shoot. So another shoot technique is handheld, the tripod. Move, quickly move around, quickly shoot it, very quickly. The problem is your hand is not stable, right? right. It can cause br br um, blurry. Okay. So, but with the, the new technology, they can reduce, even is handheld, they can reduce the blurry. The best practice is actually most of the time, can help. Sometimes okay. use tripod if needed, basically. That okay. means can, can give you the, the good quality and reduce the cost, basically. So the composition is also can, right, uh, can give you um, 
put a uh, good photo or not, right? For example, for a living room, um, a, a, re, um, a typical photographer probably just give you two shots, right? Mm -hmm. right? Right, that's it. So another good photographer probably shoot at a different angle because each room is different, different seating, different view. You never know which one is good because camera is different from your native eyes. Right. Sometimes, you have more choices and yes. now the MLS allows you to have 40 photos so you can take a yes. few different shots of yes, the same yes. room. Yeah. So Much next better. step is the post-processing. Okay. HDR typically for the same photo, we shoot at least three photos with a different exposure, different lighting. Mm. Uh, some use a five, some use a nine, but a three is good enough for most of them. Okay. So the brightest one is to try to capture the darkest spot in the room. Okay. The darker one, try to capture the most bright spot of the room. So make the visible, otherwise you cannot see it, right? Yeah. Then combine the three to get, give you the best images. Oh, awesome. I didn't know that, James. Yes. So then you get... So then they use a software to kind of take the three and- So one approach, it. basically one approach is upload to HDR software, HDR software automatically load each images and automatically do it. Mm -hmm. Then because software is not perfect, then you need some manual correction. So the manual correction, if you spend a little time on the manual correction, you get the basic. I see. Yeah. So if you spend more time Try to correct it, you get a second one, typical. If you manually do not use the HDR software, automatically, you manually combine the three together, use your experiences to do it, then you get the sharpest. I see. So most so, of the homes we're, we're working on, they're gonna be, they should be, right, Jane? They should be kind of in the typical range unless you're dealing with really high-end properties, you know, two, three million dollars. Two million probably is, is, is really up to you. So you, if you really feel like uh, I want to get a sharp, I just spend $50 more. So I, my food can stand out, right? I see. Okay. So, yeah. You're selling so, me. This is good. Talk to me through unless, it. Unless you want to do not want other, other people to see your view because the backyard is so ugly, <laughs> right? <laughs> so um, most of the uh, rural area, they have backyard where to put the backyard, right? Mm -hmm. So they, they want to show the backyard. So um, why not just spend a few dollars more, right? Right. So yeah. you're only talking, it's a hundred bucks. And when you talk about the big scheme of things, the kids yeah, big difference is you want to stand out, right? Yeah. So you, really up to you. I mean, a lot of agents are so picky, even they negotiate with $10. Right. So, <laughs> right. So I think the top performer do not do that, right? They want right. to, yes. They want, they want what they want. So who... So, yeah, so you got a little, little bit more, we're getting close on time, so. Yeah, so let me do quickly go through it. Uh, so who do the, pro if you see the bad quality, the poor quality, very likely the, pro um, the photographer do themselves. Yeah. Okay. So right now, basically, a lot of photographer outsourcing this to overseas because they are much cheaper, they can, for the same cost, they yeah. can do a much better job, right? So watch for potential fees. Uh, for big company, they typically charge you, they have, you have to prepay, they make charge you cancellation fee. Correct. This guy, very important. Some company included, some company do not include it. Um, okay. um, so um, let me quickly go through it, basically. Um, that's the platform, virtuous, right? So basically you, you can use them. The problem is um, they do not have a high quality. <laughs> um, the best way probably use a photographer, but uh, photographer quality is really very dramatically. Uh, so Virtuance charge you $190 for 25 photo. Blue sky, another $30. So the quality interior look like this. Yeah. It's not really high quality. <laughs> So external shot is good, um, okay. but it's not a look like a real. <laughs> yes, they overdid it, I think. They will overdo it. Um, so this is my yeah. quality. Um, basically, I recommend it. Basically, 
um, referral as your co um, teammates, and also try to find the best photographer as your primary. Um, or you want somebody that's local, that's and that's professional, that can meet the timelines. You know, and I've I've hired you, James, on a few occasions where you go and you meet with the client. He brings a tripod. You know, he uses sometimes manual, sometimes tripod, um, but you have the experience to to get the shots that we need. So yeah. if I was to, you know, hire you, would I just contact your, your name and phone number right here, and then I would pay you directly, and then. The, then we we'd schedule a time where you would go out, right? That's how yeah, you yes. work. Yes, hopefully later on, um, because um, I can train other photographers, right? So right. later on, so how can you, right? In Tacoma or somewhere, hey, can you do this? Maybe it can make your photographer, uh, photography much better, right? Yeah, we so, talked about one of the other yeah. photographers that we recommend and you've even gone on tour with him and, and you know, he, he broke away from the, Group he was with, and he started doing photography. But he, James, just gave him some pointers, like what we want. You know, capture some of the things. He's got the experience to be able to advise them on what we are looking for for that shot. So yes, we um, have can you go back one more slide? I think there. Was, go back one to the side before this one with your contact. Um, so so right. having a partnership, yeah, backups. You want, yeah, you want primary, your go-to one or two photographers, but you do want to have backups because I had a photographer, he passed away, he died. Yeah, so that you want to have, yeah. have a good photographer and a backup um, yeah. for the areas that you're servicing. Um, and then comparing pricing and quality, I've got enough, I learned a lot today, James, as far as what to ask or what to look for. Yeah. Um, so you can maybe want to compare before you hire them. Yeah, I think it'll be um, um, Go back one more slide. One more slide. There we go. Yeah, okay. So, so these are yours. Go, you know, go to, I know about Virtuance. Go back to yours. The, this is mine. This is yours. For, uh, I'll James. give you, yes. if you have a few minutes. Just a couple more minutes, yeah. Show me. Um, you can see here I charge for them. This this is a card two million dollar home, right? So it's a two hundred dollar yeah. range. So we can shoot here. It's so great. So the window has to be clear. If not clear, it look like, right? It look at yeah, much. Very yeah. Dark. You can look here. They have a view here. It has to be very clear. Yes. Right? So the window here is clear. It's not a little bit foggy because of weather. It's not because of a uh, no, not because of the shot. Yeah. No, I can tell. Yeah. Yeah. So, so this one was how much? This it's two hundred dollar range, much? but okay. this is my price because, of, but typically I think two hundred fifty dollar range, definitely before below three hundred dollars, definitely can't get it. Okay. Right. How much did you? How much did you have to process this, James? How long did it take you to process? Next day, basically, next we day. deliver next day. Okay. Did you have to man? See, I'm asking the questions now. Did you manual or did you use HD and then kind of did? Oh, some... basically, no. I <laughs> did not do myself. I do not do myself. Basically, I outsourcing to overseas. Okay. Use did a manual. Have... I say did I pay you... more. I say ask for manual rendering, uh -huh. so I pay more to get this. Okay. Um, regardless, low price, whatever. I always ask for manual okay. because yeah, I do not go low that because it's just charging me probably ten dollar more or something like this, mm -hmm. it, we get the best photo, right? So you upload them to your overseas connection, and then they did um, a manual, but they they is overseas person that processed. Is that right? Yes, it's a okay. it's a outsourcing company and located in California. So they use yeah their retoucher is located in in Asia somewhere. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's very pretty. You can tell that you have a good eye for the composition. Of you look at it here. This is a low price home in Renton, uh, 400K mm -hmm. range. So this is this here is similar to yours, right? You look at here, right? Sure. So yeah, you, okay, this quality has to be, um, has to be manual rendering, yeah, post processing. Okay. And then so how much was the Renton house? It's just little. This is also $180 to get this. Hey, that's so, see, people don't realize it's so affordable. That's not that much. It's affordable. No. It's affordable. So, yeah. now, virtually, you spend $190 and 
and you'd pay another thirty dollar for blue sky. The windows oh, still have yeah, the windows still have a dark cloud, right. not blue sky. Is the quality is bad, right? Right. So with one hundred eighty dollar location rent time, and I can earn money. Is 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 the present is not too bad to me actually. No, it's very nicely done. Yeah. Very good. James, so I, I hopefully we can talk about Matterport on another, top, another call, but I really sure. appreciate you taking the time. It was, it was well done, and I hope you guys got a lot out of the webinar tonight. Um, if you want to, to I'll, I'll put James' contact information. Again, he's licensed, which is very, very nice, especially if you are already put a key box on. He does have the rights to go in and enter the property, and if you're in King County, I would say, you may want to reach out and, and add him to your resources. Um, if you're in a different county or a different area and you need to just consult with him, he is very, very nice to talk to. Um, yeah. Oh, Ben said, great information, James. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you. Especially your explanation of the HDR. Yeah. We <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Very good job. So thank okay. you for your time, you guys. Have a great week, and then we'll catch you next Monday. We're going to talk about consultations at the showing next Monday. Um, okay. And we'll catch up with you later, James. Have a okay, good week. Okay, thank you. Bye. Bye. All right, bye-bye.